Hi, I'm Ben, and this is my review on Doctor Strange Into the Multiverse of Madness. Ooh. <laughs> okay, so I really like this movie. I try to ignore the 74% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it got an 86, I believe, on Rotten Tomatoes on the audience score, which is pretty good. Now, I have heard... I haven't heard what people's problems with the movie. I think it's, I think the mix between horror and action may have, excuse me, may have set people off a bit, but I don't know. But I really like this movie, movie. But now, the movie has been out for a long time, so spoilers, major spoilers. And here's the spoilers. Wanda's the villain. The Fantastic Four. Alum Professor X, Black Bolt, to, are in the movie, like Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four is in. And he's played by, ooh, I forget his name, but he played Jim Halpert on The Office. And everyone's demanding, have that guy play Mr. Fantastic, have that guy play Mr. Fantastic. And I'm like, alright, here he is, he's Mr. Fantastic. No, he's not technically in the MCU, he's in like a parallel universe, but it's still great. And Patrick Stewart has Professor X, but, and he's not exactly the Professor, because I thought he was going to be the Professor X from the X-Men movie franchise, but he is, but he's in the, but he's basically the Professor X from the 90s cartoon, but he's in the yellow chair from the 90s cartoon, so it is weird. Like, how did this 90s cartoon became so popular? I, I remember watching it on Disney XD. They were airing reruns of it on Disney XD, and I said the PVR. It's on Disney Plus, and I'm watching it. I can understand why a lot of the people really love this show, but it's but it's weird because I only feel like now I'm hearing the love for this show. Like, everyone's been talking about it. Everyone's demanding that make more appearances in the show. Maybe it's because it's because as Great as the other X-Men cartoons were, this one feels the more authentic to the comics and draws and tries to be more faithful to the source material, but so it is cool seeing it blend with the Marvel movies. But yeah, even when Professor X enters the room, they play the 90s X-Men theme, which is pr pretty funny because after all the years we had Pat Patrick Stewart with the X-Men movies, this is the one that tries to be more authentic to the 90s cartoon. Hmm. There are people who show favoritism of how faithful that's from the comic and how much liberties the movies take. Blah blah. But yeah. Yeah. I guess, well, there is an understanding of, because I guess how, because I guess people, when they first heard Patrick Stewart's going to be in it, they, they felt like this should have been more apt. I guess there is a side of me that understands the six, the 74 on Rotten Tomatoes because I think a lot of people wanted this to be more big and epic like how No Way Home or Civil War, even though those were standalone, they were still just as epic. I think people want this to be just as epic, but see, because you have Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier in this, and I thought people would make this more bigger, like how they made No Way Home bigger, but it doesn't have the same feel. But it's still pretty good. Also, what the maximum? Also, I just want to say Black Bolt. Now, in 2017, they were making an Inhumans TV show, and I hated the costume designs. I, I'm like, where did, where's Black Bolt's mask? But in here, they have Black Bolt's mask, and they got Black Bolt right in this. And I feel like this is how you do Black Bolt right. Now, I never, I own a few Inhumans comics, but. I only know the Inhumans from like the TV series, from like animated crossovers like Fantastic Four, Ultimate Spider-Man, Hulk and the Agents of Smash, like Avengers Assemble, you know, like animated crossovers. So I know from that. But I, when I first heard the Inhumans, like their show was terrible, I felt support. Like I, I made them like the underdogs and I wanted them to be like, you can do it, do it. Like I, I wanted them to give them more love because how people were hating on them, and because I got to know the Inhumans from other media, and I'm like, the, the Inhumans are pretty cool, they should get more love. But yes, I should point out, for those of you that don't know, and for those of you who do know, probably might say this in the comments section, there was a comic called X-Men vs. Inhumans. Now, when I first 
Now, when I first were introduced to the Inhumans in the Fantastic Four ca cartoon, they, I may have pointed this out in my other videos, but yeah, like the Inhumans also. I actually heard the Inhumans comic book line got cancelled because the show was that bad. And here's another thing I should point out. Because when I first got introduced to the Inhumans in the Fantastic Four crossover in the 90s animated series, I thought, like, okay, so the Inhumans are like cousins to the human race, but they're created by Kree, but they're like super powered humans. But we also have the X Men and the Mutants, and I'm like, what's their connection to the mutants, like from the X Men? Well, they made X Men vs. Inhumans comic book crossovers, and I thought, that's awesome, I want to read that, because I'm. Because that's something I was excited for, like to see how, like, explain what makes their powers different, what's their history, how they just happen to be super powered humans on the same earth, like, what are the chances they're created by Kree and Inhumans are like next evolution or something. But, sorry, I'm supposed to review this movie, but this is just something I want to. But here's something I actually later heard of that I was watching Watch Mojo's top 10 list of worst things that made the comic book community mad or worse things that happened in comic books and one of them was X-Men vs. Inhumans like why is people mad at this well I'm oh, sorry it's something else um well apparently the Inhumans were supposed to kill off the X-Men and replace them with the Inhumans in the new Marvel comic line because Fox still owned the rights to the X-Men and it was even interfere the whole copyright claim was even interfering with the comics and it was going crazy ball so they were gonna kill off the X-Men and replace them with the Inhumans I mean yeah I said I did like the Inhumans but that doesn't mean I want them to kill off the X-Men okay sorry it's my Hot Wheels track thing it's falling down but just ignore it but anyways like like don't get me wrong like I like Iron Man and Captain America, but that doesn't mean I want them to kill off Spider-Man or replace him with these characters. Like, I like Captain America and Iron Man, but that doesn't mean I want to kill off Spider-Man. Huh. Well, anywho. Well, anywho, that, that line was cancelled. Apparently, this made the fans so angry that... They actually killed off the Inhumans, which is really frustrating. So much so that they don't even make Miss Marvel an Inhuman. They said they're going to give her Green Lantern powers from the Kree or something. I only saw the trailers, which they, the Miss Marvel show looks really cool. It's just the Inhumans' elastic power was kind of part of her. So to see her like having Green Lantern powers set up her elastic power it just feels... I like things to be faithful to the source material. I may have already explained this in another video, but I kind of forgot what I said. I should rewatch my old videos. Anyways, sorry, I should review. Anyways, I'm happy they had Black Bolt in this movie, and I'm really happy how they handled him and he's faithful. I hope this gives back the love to Inhumans. I hope Doctor Strange saves the Inhumans and let people get to know the Inhumans, because I haven't seen that TV show. I tried. Yeah, I watch a lot of Marvel shows, and but I tried staying away from the Inhumans because I liked. Being humans, but that doesn't. But I don't. But I hear terrible things about this show, so I try to stay away from it. But anyways, reviewing the movie. I was so happy when Mr. Fantastic was in it because I want the Fantastic Four to be in the. And there is a side of me that's glad that Disney owns Fox. I know that's it's weird, but hey, if we get Fantastic Four in the MCU, I heard John Watts. I wanted John Watts to direct the Fantastic Four movie, but. He's not apparently, because he directed the MCU movie, MCU Spider-Man movies, and I wanted him to do it. But uh, we'll hopefully to find a great director. But I was really happy to see Mr. Fantastic, and but yes, I should point out since I'm talking about spoilers, they killed them off. They introduced them, and then they killed them off later in the next scene. What's up with that? Why did they kill them? Yeah, like, I get that they're, they're versions of them from a parallel universe, and we're gonna see the other ones in, the other ones in, like, in the MCU timeline, but, yeah, it was really gr great, great, still great seeing them for a little appetizer, but anyways, 
Wanda Maximoff, here's to my review. Wanda Maximoff. Um, she's the villain in this movie, apparently. Like, I thought Baron Mordo was gonna be the villain, because in the other, like, I seen him in, like, Marvel Spider Man crossovers, but he. But Baron. I thought Baron Mordo was gonna be the villain, but no, Scarlet. What's wrong with thinking? Because Baron Mordo's been the villain in comics and cartoons. I don't read a lot of Doctor Strange comics, but I know. Bear Mordo's mostly the villain. He's like the Joker to Batman, but why isn't he being the villain? Why is he the why is he the villain? Like here he's like an ally but goes against him but then tries to get be on his side. And this one's like a different version from a parallel universe, but I thought they were gonna set him up for the next movie, but why is it so hard to make a Baron Mordo villain? Like, in the first movie, what should have been Baron Mordo as the villain, because that it connects to his origin story, it was some dude that we don't know, that we don't know that much from the film. It was actually a, a henchman, which is weird. But yeah, Scarlet Witch, she was a cool villain in her own way. It's just, she was a former Avenger, and she had her issues, to, so to see her turn into a villainy, was kind of weird. Also, did they kill her at the end? Like, what's up with that? Like, I hope they didn't. Like, I'm I'm kind of waiting because since they're planning on introducing the X Men to the MCU, I'm kind of waiting for them to reveal like, oh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were mutants and the son and daughter to Magneto. I know they retcon that in the comics, but it's comics. They retcon and do anything. I, they're gonna find a way to retcon this anyways. <sighs> So anyways, mutants. Hopefully, Scarlet Witch comes back and tries to be good. But here's her motive. Apparently, because remember in WandaVision, and I will admit this is a problem. Like before, with like I love the MCU, I love the shows, I love... But a lot of people's problem with the MCU is that you have to watch this movie to understand 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 this movie. But now you have to sign up for a streaming service to watch this mini series to understand this movie. Like, don't get me wrong, the comics did that. And heck, they even made fun of it in a Simpsons comic I actually own. No, like Bart Simpson and. Um. Bart Simpson and the Simpsons comics and Simpsons Super Spectacular issue 9 if you look those up yeah but yeah um, but it's weird that they're connecting this to the the streaming service there's a slimy that think it's cool but now it feels like a chore to understand this like like even my dad I had to explain this to my dad oh so that's another thing I actually did saw this movie with my dad when I was visiting my aunt and uncles. I didn't want to do a, a video on my phone similar to how I did a Ven, uh, Spider-Man No Home and Space Gem A New Legacy. I thought they're kind of weird and it's better if I just do it here. So I... So yeah, so... Sp so yeah, so... I don't know how to feel about Wanda being a villain. I like Wanda as a hero. Like I know she's the most. Sometimes she's a villain in the comics, but but she's had like a Thanos and Loki motivation. Like remember her kids in WandaVision where she had to erase them to shut down the thing to save that town because they weren't real. But in a parallel universe, they exist. So she wants to replace her version with that, similar to the Kingpin's origin and. In Spider Verse and that other lady, that that evil lady in Voltron, Legendary Defenders. But yeah, but yeah, it's interesting that they're doing it with her kids. So, because some people point out, what about Peter, um, her brother? Like, what about her brother? Like, is Aaron Tyler? I forget his name. Is that actor not available anymore? Like, like, what's up with that? Just bring him back. And yeah, I guess I'm not a fan of the Ralph Boner thing they did for for the... Because they cast the actor who played Quicksilver in the X-Men movies, and I thought that was cool. But I kind of wish they would just... They say he was from the multiverse. I mean, they're doing the multiverse in here and having Patrick Stewart... And bringing Patrick Stewart into this, they have no reason not to anymore. So, yeah, the Ralph Boner, all that for a Boner... Dream. 
Uh, anyways, but yeah, um, yeah, so, like I said, it was weird, but I still enjoy her, her character. But, yeah, that's her, but her main villain motivation is that she wants to meet her kids, see her kids. Sorry, I kind of forgot what I was talking about, but, anyways. Sorry, I have Asperger's Syndrome, so I'm, so I'm not good with my words and sentences. Okay, so, my, here's a thing, um... Miss America's in this. Um, she's kind of like the second one that don't the mantle in the comics. Like, her name's America Chavez or something. I forget. But yeah, she was a pretty cool character, and she helped out. And she just wanted to see her parents and travel to other dimensions. I heard that she's the only one in the comics. Like, there's no other variants of her. She's the only one, which I find hard to believe because since they're making all their animated shows and movies canon. It's kind of, I find it hard to believe that there's not like a variant of her, like, was she the same Miss America in those Marvel Rises shows, or in the comics, like, is she, like, is this going to connect to, like, the Marvel Comics comics, or is this just an adaptation that we should just ignore and not bring up, anyways, yeah, so, oh, so here's my only nitpick, because, this came at a weird time. Um, apparently, it's revealed that every dream you have in the movie, every dream you have, is a version of you from a parallel universe. Like, if you have a dream, it's a version of you from a parallel universe. And I don't know, I find that, I know it's fantasy and it's supposed to be like make-believe and your own imagination, but it's just, I've been having a lot of weird dreams and I'm like, I don't think this... I don't know if this happened in a parallel universe. And but anyways, she was a really cool character and I like and I and there is a lot of CGI in this movie, but it's Doctor Strange and is traveling to the multiverse and has magic and sorcery, so of course there's gonna be a lot of CGI. I mean, how else will you do all these things? I mean, how else can you do it practically by and you need CGI because some of the things really need to work in CGI. Like there's a lot of elements that need to work in CGI. But with that said, it was all an awesome movie. So I think I have a few problems with it, but overall it was really epic and the horror scenes were pretty awesome. I haven't seen this with my mom yet, so I might see it tomorrow. But sorry if I was a bit awkward in this video. Um, I think I mentioned this in my other videos, but for those of you who haven't seen it, I I communicate weird and don't get my words together. I know some people in the comments are saying like, oh, you should write a script, but I don't know how to edit, and I don't know, and I just been recording myself live unscripted, and I think a lot of people would just write script, but I kind of, because I feel like a lot of scripts would just take a long time. I kind of just want to do a video and get it over with, and boom. But yeah, that's my review from Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, the multiverse has been in everywhere here. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, No Way Home, Doctor Strange, Loki, The Flash, the CW Arrow shows The Flash movie that's coming out. And yes, I heard some controversy, but that's his own video for another day. Um... But yeah, I mean, it has been part of superhero comics for cent for decades, like even in the 80s, and si even in the 80s, so, and it's been going on for years. But I've been a big fan of the multiverse since I was young, like I'm glad seeing the multiverse, because I love seeing different heroes and their own versions and ideas, it's fun. I actually want to do my own comics with different variations. Well, this video is 19 minutes long. And I feel like I should stop now. So that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And you probably might see some new videos. Uh, after this, I'm going to review the Chip and Dale movie. <laughs>